Okay, it looks like we have, thank you, Adele. Um, a few more people that have just signed up. So welcome, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Diane Smith, and I am joined by my colleagues, Lisa Clark and Adele Gabrielson, and we are all part of the marketing team here in, in, in Exeter. So happy October. Um, we hope you are all staying safe and staying well. Um, and, and someone asked me recently what I missed most about being in this pandemic, COVID-19. And my first response was that I miss hugging. I miss seeing people in a community way and I missed hugging. So I'm going to give a virtual hug to all of you and thank you for taking the time this afternoon to educate yourselves about our coming to a continuing care retirement community. Under normal circumstances, we would be hosting you here and hosting a lovely lunch and being able to personally connect with you. But since we can't do this, we, we hope that this will be the second best thing for you. So a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, your microphones have been muted, but um, we'll welcome your questions at the end. So submit all your questions. To the Q, through the Q&A, and um, we'll be happy to answer them at the end of the program. This workshop is being recorded and will be sent out if you want to refer to it or share it. And we, as always, we welcome your suggestions on how to improve um, our program and any future topics that you have. So feel free to, to give us your feedback. So before I introduce our, our resident panelists, I'm going to talk a little bit about introduce you to the Riverwoods Exeter community. So um, he, you're looking right now at the entrances of three of our buildings. So Riverwoods started as a dream, I always say, in the 1980s. Today, 26 years later, we have, we're a vibrant, accredited community of active, interested adults who not only care about each other, but care about the world. So you're looking at the entrance of the Woods campus, which is the original campus, the Ridge, which opened up in 2004, and the Boulders in 2010. So each campus is self-contained, offering independent living, assisted living, skilled nursing, and memory support. So I love to share our, our visionary founders, Rosemary Coffin, Marianna Hatch, who once again sat around a table and laid in the you know, 1980s and said, we want to create an environment where as we age, life is a little bit easier. We can remain active while at the same time having all the support that we need if our health care changes. So Riverwoods now has um, over in Exeter has over 600 residents between the three campuses and over 500 employees. And our mission, which we strongly promote and live, is to keep you independent as long as we can. Our ages range anywhere from late 60s up to 101, and those are people that are living in our independent apartments. So a wide range of ages. So many ask, what is a CCRC? You hear that term. The CCRC stands for Continuing Care Retirement Community. And there are many. And I always suggest to people, once you look at one, you've looked at one. So if you're just beginning in this process, good for you, congratulations. But do your due diligence as you're doing. Do your research, make sure you understand the contracts, understand what you're getting into. It's a big decision, and you want to make sure that you educate yourself. Here at Riverwoods, you need to be 62 to come in here. We provide independent living, assisted living, memory support, and our residents transition between the levels of care depending upon the needs. So we have a full menu of cultural programs, educational programs. I think we have over 60 resident-led committees we provide transportation uh, within a 25 mile radius. All of your home maintenance is taken care of. So, you know, if we have a terrible winter, it's a great, 
great marketing tool for us because people will say, I'm done shoveling. I'm done, you know, taking care of my house. So all of that is done for you. But most importantly, and I think in my over 13 years of being here, I can tell you that what I often hear is people say, I've met the best friends um, since I've come to Riverwoods. So, and that's what we provide, a community of like-minded people who are totally engaged in life at all different levels. So now I'm gonna introduce our, our panel of residents. Uh, our first couple to speak, David and Susan Wakefield, who live at the Boulders campus, and they have been residents since 2017. So take it away, David and Susan. Well, greetings all. Glad that you could join us this afternoon. Uh, as I understand it, the topic for this afternoon is why did we decide to come here? And why did we decide that we wanted to move to a CCRC as opposed to living at home and you know growing old at home? One of the first things was my father absolutely refused to move to a CCRC. Um, he was in his house just managing his increasing needs for assistance. It was, it was really stressful. Um, had to manage caregivers as they changed and weren't always reliable. I'm, I'm sure you, some of you might be, be familiar with that drill. So by the time we finally got him into a CCRC, it was too late. He couldn't enjoy the advantages. And it, it just really wasn't the best situation for him by that time. Yeah. And, you know, during the day when we'd call him and chat with him, things were pretty good. A phone call at night was never a good phone call. Uh, and being 400 miles away, 500 miles away, there really wasn't a lot we could do, so it fell on her brothers, and uh, things could have been a lot better. Now, on the other side of the coin, my mother decided that she wanted to move into a CCRC in Concord, New Hampshire, and so she moved in, and first she had a little cottage, then she moved into what they referred to as the lodge, which was the main building, had nice room there. Then as she got older, she uh, moved into their skilled nursing. Now, all this time, she met great friends, enjoyed herself tremendously, didn't have to do a lot of upkeep in most places. And phone calls at night still weren't good, but there was a big difference. We get a phone call at night. Hi, this is Bill. I'm with, you know, maintenance. Your mother is here. She fell. We've got the ambulance coming. The ER has been notified. And would you like to talk to her? I didn't have to jump in the car and do a four and a half hour drive trying to figure out what to do. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. She was taken care of. Uh, it was great. Um, yeah, we didn't have to worry either about her lying somewhere and not being found for several days. Yeah. And, but, you know, that was one aspect of it. But the other aspect was she really relished her opportunities and the chance for her to meet other people, go wandering around, all the social activities she could do and chit chat. So we, as we were getting older and we watched all of this occurring, uh, we decided, hmm, maybe this is not a bad idea. And so that's one of the major reasons why we're here. And, and one of the things too is we don't have children. Mm -hmm. We don't have anyone to burden with the responsibility of taking care of us. So we said, hmm, we're gonna have to figure it out on our own. So now what do we do? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so we visited a variety of CCRCs here on the East Coast, out in Pennsylvania. Uh, we decided that what we really liked was we wanted to be near the ocean, near the mountains, in the areas that uh, we'd been real comfortable with in the past. I grew up here in New Hampshire. Susan got dragged, I won't say screaming and kicking, but she got uh, brought up here for many, many years. So. This whole area is our home. We're comfortable and when we can't drive anymore, we can still take you know, the uh, transport that's provided here and go out towards the 
the countryside and see places that are familiar and comfortable. Yeah, so, so Dave talked about, you know, what we were looking for. And, and also, as, as we visited the different CCRCs, yes, Diane is right. When you've seen one, you've seen one. There are, there are differences, some of, them, some of them minor, some of them significant amongst all the CCRCs. And um, just visiting the places and, and looking at them, talking to residents, really reinforced our idea that this, this would be the right move for us. So one of the things we did learn was, hmm, there are waiting lists. Oh, you mean we can't just sign up and move in right away? No, you can't. And, and really the good CR CCRCs all have a waiting list. You, you probably don't want to enter one that doesn't have a waiting list, un unless it's one brand new that's opening up with a track record of the organization behind it. You, you really want to be on a waiting list, even though that may seem frustrating. And although you'll be told, X number of years and you think, oh my gosh, I have to wait that long. Surprises happen, Th things mm -hmm. occur. We expected at least five, maybe seven or eight years. Guess what? We got the call in three years and came here. So you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah. The other thing that you've got to be aware of is how financially healthy is the organization? We're figuring that given our genetics, we could be here for another 30 years. <laughs> At least that's what we're planning. And uh, we definitely want the place to be here doing healthy and whatever. So we actually uh, had seen, when we were looking, an uh, opportunity to sit in on a uh, discussion by the CFO of the organization. And so we asked Mary, our uh, market person that we were dealing with, hey, do you mind if we come in, sneak in? And she said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll set up an appointment with you. So we met with Kevin for our hour and a half plus. He went over the entire uh, audit statement with us, explained everything, um, understood most of it. And, but it was just the openness that uh, it wasn't, oh yeah, we're good and healthy. Don't bother us, kid. It was, this is, you know, why we invest our money in this way. This is why we ask for money in this way. And uh, it was all straightforward and uh, answered our questions. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were other things that we really liked about Riverwoods, like, you know, the, you might have read the, the three-legged stool concept. It's, you know, management, the board, and the residents. It's, it's a shared responsibility to keep the place running the way we all want it to, to run. And we said, you know, that, that's, that sounds really good to us. We don't want to just be told what to do. Residents do have a say in what's done. They're involved in so many things. Um, uh, Kaylee, or no, I, I guess it was um, Adele mentioned how many committees there are and they really are resident run. Residents propose a particular type of committee and, and get it going. And we are on several, and, and it's very it's very rewarding. Um, and you know other things about Riverwoods. It's it's an attractive location where there are there are woods around us, but it's not as though we are in the woods in in the wilderness. Very close to us are are adjacent residential neighborhoods, and the neighbors come running and walking and coming with their dogs through our property, which you know makes it feel like we're just in another, you know, a house, an apartment, whatever, right, right in the midst of an, a residential neighborhood. So we're not isolated from the community. And, and we really like that. A <clears throat> um, few other things about Exeter itself. We get winter weather, but it's not like northern New Hampshire winter weather. The seashore is nearby, as are the mountains. Doesn't take long. Exeter has a charming downtown. It's all independent shops. And if you want all the chain stores, you know, grocery stores, uh, drug stores, what have you. A couple miles out of town, that's all on one road. So you've got this nice little traditional downtown that you can walk around, it's really pleasant. And a couple miles outside are all those services you need, but you don't want them right in your downtown. Um, there are highly rated medical centers nearby. Mm -hmm. That's another important thing, mm -hmm. particularly as you get older. So, um, those are just a few of the things that we really like about the place. 
And, you know, as Susan mentioned, committees. And uh, one of the nice things here is you can be as busy and involved as you want to be. Uh, we're on multiple committees, keep seeing, uh, keep getting a little bit more dragged into things. But if you're not interested, you're not obligated to be involved in any of these things. You can just kick back, like we have a ground floor apartment. You can sit back, have your cup of coffee, look out the tree at the trees across the street, and just watch squirrels run by. It's up to you. And we eat breakfast and lunch out there as much as we can during the season. Um, just, just one final thing. The pandemic, we are so glad that we were here during this. We have had far more socialization than we ever would have had in our house where we would have just been pretty much isolated. And the staff here have just been absolutely amazing going, the, the term above and beyond doesn't begin to express what they have done. And we really don't think we could have been in a safer place. And just for her, a little bit on her comment about the staff and people here, one of the things that we did do is we visited here and other places, stayed overnight, uh, met with other people, and we did it on times when nothing was going on. It wasn't a marketing event or anything like that. And we would go and we'd walk in the halls and walk by various residents and staff and say hi and whatever. Invariably, everybody gave us a smile, said hi, asked how things were going. Everybody was pleasant. That means an awful lot if you're going to move into a place for the rest of your life. And all the staff seem to know everybody's name too, <laughs> which is impressive because there are a lot of us here. Okay. So I think, I think that wraps it up for us. Yep. Yeah. Hello, moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Sam. I guess I'll just start. Diane's not introducing me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Sam, Sam Fisk. Uh, I've been a resident here for almost four years. My wife and I have been. And uh, to get here was a bit of a journey for me. Um, I was one of those who said, not me. I'm not going to one of those places. Uh -uh, I'm not going to one of those places. And I was very insistent and said, uh, and felt like, I guess I was acting as though I, I, I wasn't gonna grow old. I, I was never gonna age. And um, uh, why would I wanna be with all those old people? Uh, but uh, I, we were having an experience with my uh, wife's dad, who uh, was a widower, and uh, she looked after him for 16 or 17 years from a distance. And it was a real burden. And we decide, she decided and convinced me that we were not going to be um, uh, in a position where we we're going to be a burden on our kids. Uh, I have two daughters and their families. So anyway, gradually I warmed up to the idea a bit, and I did have I did have two aunts. One was at Wake Robin, uh, up near Burlington in Vermont, and I had another aunt at a place called Carlton Will Willard in uh, Bedford, Mass. So I've had some exposure to CCRCs, and I must say I was. Uh, enjoyed them, having meals there with them uh, and uh, getting to know these places a bit, but I still, I still was very, very hesitant in going. But I guess finally I accepted the idea that yes, I'm gonna get older, I'm gonna age, I'm gonna probably have physical problems and uh, a place like this is the place to be. So um, after, uh, so we signed I, I, ourselves, we, we were retired and living um, at the time uh, when we really got into thinking about this. Uh, we were living in the Adirondacks all year round, a place called Keene and Keene Valley, where incidentally Rosemary Coffin, one of the founders of this place, um, uh, spent her summers. And uh, we, um, uh, we started looking around. We knew, we, I, I worked in Massachusetts, so I, I knew people that had gone to other places in Massachusetts and parents and friends, et cetera. And we really did look around and I agree that every place you go to, it's, it's that one you're seeing and not any of the others. Um, 
And uh, we actually put a deposit down in two places in Vermont, in Millbury and in Shelburne. And, uh, but then we began to hear about Wake Raw, about <coughs> Riverwoods. And um, uh, it has quite a reputation. I mean, it just perks up. You, it kept ringing bells or something, you know, oh, Riverwoods. And so we decided to uh, go down and look at it. And we had a good friend uh, whose parents were uh, here and well served. They really talked very highly about the medical facilities. And so we came down and looked and we, we came via a road called Pickpocket Lane. Now, how can you go wrong if you have Pickpocket Lane to deal with? I mean, it just sounded like, hey, this is going to be a lot of fun even, you know, and sort of be out in the country and whatever. And all the woods around and, and it was very evident. We were told immediately that there were trails here. Actually, I went for a walk for an hour this morning and do that very, very often. And, uh, and we got to meet the marketing staff who were extremely welcoming. And as David said about people here and smiling and just greeting us, it, it was, it was a very, very, very friendly and uh, wonderful. So, um, we, we, it just grew on us and it became very evident, especially after I have someone who's help, helped me with my finances a bit. And we, the uh, Riverwood sent all the financial information and he, he could go through it much better than I could. And uh, said, this is a great place. Uh, they're fine, they're very solid. And so that we felt relieved about that. And uh, we particularly also like that it's a nonprofit and not, uh, so, you know, the idea of making money on people as they age, this is not appealing, at least to us at all. So uh, it felt very good to be at a, a nonprofit place. And what, one of the things that stood out immediately was that there, were, there was a role here for the, the uh, residents uh, in terms of how the place is run. And it, what impressed us particularly was that there are three residents here who serve as resident trustees. And that felt uh, very important to me. And um, I, I, I feel that residents are really listened to here. And if we don't like something that's going on, we let people know and they listen. And um, uh, that can go on quite often, ranging, of course, always from food. I mean, when you're at a place like this, you're always going to have something to say about the food. Um, and some of the, what some people think about what they say about the food is ridiculous, but there are some serious concerns at times. But a lot of other stuff going on. I mean, there's a new change in government's, uh, governance possibly, and there's been a, a real reaction and response to that, very involved with people and has felt, um, it, it's just great. And many other places are run from top down. They're, you know, you, you hear sort of what management says and that's the way it is. And it, it feels like it's a much greater interaction here uh, between those of us in the administration and, and others, uh, us as residents. Anyway, some other things um, I like about um, this place. One of the, oh, I, I forgot to mention, I, like, I liked also that it's not a high, high rise kind of thing. I'm, I'm not into that stuff. And uh, it felt very approachable. So it was not only places like Pickpocket and the road and the, and the woods, but it was just that the buildings felt, they felt inviting and, and quite approachable. And that, that's important to me as I'm someone who loves the woods and actually has a cabin in the Adirondacks. Another thing that um, uh, really was, has been a surprise to us and was as we got to know Exeter better was the, the town, which uh, you mentioned, Susan, I think. And, and um, it was, it, that was very um, uh, important to us. It's a fabulous bookstore here. Wonderful. I like bookstores. And then there's Phillips uh, Exeter um, Academy, which is the richest boarding school actually in the country and has um, uh, incredible music. And I, I like to sing and I'm a, a musician of sorts and um, just concerts three times a year at the end of each of their semesters. Uh, there are probably 18 or 20 musical presentations a year. The school is incredible um, in terms of, of musicians, the students that go there. It's really like a small college and you feel that most of the students there are so intellectually prepared and advanced that it's like having a college up the road. It's just a mile away. And, it, and uh, we, we are invited and encouraged. I mean, I think sometimes half of Riverwoods fills up half the audience in their wonderful new uh, music hall. And uh, we, we, it's just a great treat. 
Um, and there are also some very good choruses in the vicinity here. I'm, I'm in one of them and um, who give concerts. Uh, so it's very fulfilling that way. Um, and and it, wonderful. And once I got over the idea that on my license plate, it was going to be live free or die, which I could never quite make sense of. And it just, uh, I had a thing about New Hampshire. I said, no, oh, they're very strange there. But I, I think uh, we've really settled in. We uh, love this place. Um, it's treated us extremely well. And, um, uh, and now, and they have a train to Boston. So if they, when I get to the point where I can't drive anymore, I know I can run down to the station and get on taken by transportation offered for free by, by the staff here, go down to the railroad station and take one of five trains and go into uh, Boston to lose myself on the, the down Easter. Um, so that, that really did it for me. I've always liked trains anyway, and I sometimes find myself absentmindedly running into the woods here on one of the trails just to see a freight train go by, and you actually can hear a whistle. Talk about being reminded of old times. It's just great. And anyway, never regretted the choice. Uh, I feel very comfortable. My wife and I both do. And uh, thanks for listening. That's about what I have to say. Sam, thank you very much, Sam. Um, and thank you, David and Susan. I was muted, so I wasn't able to say thank you to you and introduce Sam and, and Linda, who I'm looking at in, in the background of where Sam's speaking, and I see artwork. And both Sam and Linda are amazing artists also. And um, so there's a little display of it behind you. So thank you very much, Sam. And now I'm going to turn it over to Herb and Alan Kingsbury, who are going to wrap up our last um, resident speakers to chat. I'm going to turn off and let you go. Well, uh, I'm Herb. <laughs> to my right is Ellen. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I'm going to, to talk for about five minutes, and then Ellen will pick it up from there. Our journey to Riverwoods started about 10 years ago uh, in a place called Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, Ellen somehow found a workshop being offered by the University of North Carolina at Asheville on aging. And she said, let's go. And said, well, we'll go hiking down there and go to the workshop, which we did. And, um, well, they talked about finances and health, but among other things, they, uh, there was a session on living arrangements. And that's where we first heard, I first heard, about something called a CCRC. And it sounded interesting. And I said, oh, we'll explore that later on. Well, it took maybe a couple of years before we did. Uh, but then we realized we weren't getting any younger. younger. Um, we were living in Kittery, Maine, in a condominium uh, community uh, with some older people in it. And we watched as some of these older people got really old and couldn't manage by themselves. Their spouses died. And they were kind of stuck. So we thought, we don't want that to happen to us. So we began to explore. And uh, we, we worked up uh, uh, a list of criteria. Actually, uh, some of these criteria were implicit rather than explicit at the time. Uh, since then, become, they've become explicit. And, and among these were, uh, we were looking for was the attractiveness of the um, physical facilities. Uh, our impressions of the staff and the residents. Uh, financial stability, that of course is important. Um, location, and by location, that, that location is a number of things for us. Um, we have children and grandchildren kind of all over the country, in Boulder, Colorado, and Northern Vermont, and Providence, Rhode Island, and Northern Delaware. So we wanted something that, where there was access to transportation. Um, so that was important. And we also wanted some place with a moderate climate, as uh, I think David mentioned. We don't want to freeze and we didn't want to be too hot. And, um, and just the general attractiveness of the, attractiveness of the location uh, is countryside, urban, whatever, but something that looked, felt attractive and welcoming. So we set off on a journey and um, we too looked at um, well, maybe half a dozen uh, CCRCs uh, around, we, as far away as Boulder, Colorado. Um, where do we look? Uh, hang on. Oh, uh, Hanover, New Hampshire, Shelburne, Vermont. Um, 
and here, of course, and we, we stayed overnight, at least one night in each of these, uh, put down a deposit actually in all of those, um, which was refundable or we wouldn't have done that. Uh, anyway, uh, so we, we thought and thought and thought and um, actually put in a deposit in Riverwoods Durham when that, when that became available. Anyway, we ended up here, as you can see. And uh, let me just go over some of the reasons we chose Riverwoods Exeter among the others, above the others. Uh, a, we had a head start. Uh, we have a number of friends uh, who live here and they all love it. So we thought, well, that's a good recommendation right there. Um, we had been living in the seacoast area, this area for 25 years. So we had a lot of uh, social and cultural connections uh, to the area. So a lot of routes. Uh, we knew there was convenient transportation. There's the airport in Boston, the airport in Manchester. And as Sam mentioned, you can get there even if you don't drive. Um, so that was important. Uh, we've, so we could make family visits when we wanted to. Uh, we explored the financial stability and quite thoroughly, and that came out to be just fine. And over here, um, oh, we were also attracted because we were offered a 90% refund on our unit, the cost of our unit when we died. So our children, not that they really needed it, but we thought that was a nice thing to do. Um, we were offering a, an apartment, ultimately, it was just perfect for us. It's bright, sunny, just the right size. Uh, we just love it. Ellen, every time we come in, Ellen says, isn't this wonderful? We're so lucky. And I say, yep. Um, the staff is wonderful. We met this money of the staff. And as someone said, Stan, maybe they even know your name. Uh, I don't know their names yet at all, but they know my name. Um, <laughs> Wonderful surroundings, uh, almost five miles of trails. Uh, the trails saved our sanity uh, this spring during lockdown. Every day we got out, we walked two, three, four miles. It was great. Uh, and finally, uh, of course, great extended care facilities. What have I forgotten? I've forgotten you. Well, uh, let me add to the, the healthcare facilities. As a nurse practitioner, I was very concerned about how we would be treated if we had to go into assisted living or nursing home. And as we would go out to our car before COVID, we'd go through the nursing home and the assisted living. And I always listened. I didn't look like I was listening, but I was always listening to the exchange between nurses' aides, nurses, uh, and, and clients or patients and between each other. What were they talking about? Did they sound disgruntled? Did they sound unhappy? And never once did I hear anything that was disrespectful, that wasn't anything but kind. Uh, and this was kind of after we, we got here, but I just wanted to reject that when Herb talked about the healthcare. So you were going to talk go. about your day here. Okay. So the best way I can describe uh, why I love it here is, is by describing a typical day. Uh, and I have some notes, which, which I'll refer to. First of all, the sameness of the days have a calming effect. Uh, you never have to worry that the grass is gonna to get too long or that your gutters will fill up with dead leaves or the washing machine will break. Everything works. And there's a predictability about that that I'm just, after a year and a half, just beginning to really understand how that impacts our lives. Um, so there's a predictability. Uh, the communication from administration is frequent and transparent. It's trustworthy around here. Um, so here's a typical day. I wake up early, often before the sun comes up, and in our, it comes into our little apartment. And I go, uh, you know, I may sit in the morning and do a little meditation as the sun comes up. And then I go to the library where the morning papers have been delivered two or three or four papers. And there are easy chairs and good lighting. And that, that's just a very special time for me. And after the paper, I go to the room, we have big room where the coffee's served every morning. And Mike serves the coffee, he's always got a nice greeting. Uh, muffins are served and there's always a friendly group of kind of a big circle of people discussing various things uh, if I want to join them. So often and all day long, I meet people in the halls 
and might stop and have a visit. Uh, what's, what's impressive about the people here is that consistently they're kind and accepting. If someone's a little different or someone's a little odd or the, people don't talk about each other. Um, and, and to me, that makes a very happy living situation when you kind of trust that uh, people are accepting. Um, making a lot of wonderful friends, uh, which I didn't really anticipate. Uh, so after the morning breakfast, I head down to the music room to play the piano. I'm not very good, but there are some books there that I take out of someone's case and then I play, play piano for about a half an hour. There's a recorder group. Sometimes I play with that group on Sunday mornings. Lots of music in various uh, venues here. And after that, I head down to the best place of all, which is the studio. There are two studios here. And I might spend anywhere from one to three hours a day, big windows, many tables, and it's quiet and peaceful. Uh, particularly during COVID, that would be an everyday thing that I did. I even got a little bit better, I sense, just from that, from, from doing that predictable uh, time there. After lunch, my husband and I usually go for a pretty long walk, two or three miles on the trails here, and the trails are really amazing, uh, beautiful. Um, three times a week in the late afternoon, I help teach a meditation group here, which takes, gets about six to ten pretty consistent people uh, three times a week. And very often around five o'clock, there's a group of people, socially distanced, who meet for a happy hour out on the patio. And it's a pretty funny group. We have fun. Everybody brings their own drink. And uh, then, of course, our dinner is served. And um, we end the e each day with nightly news and a good book. That basically is to say that uh, we are both very happy here and appreciative for uh, Riverwoods. So, Hello. Thank you so much, um, Ellen and Herb and everyone for the insightful look into your world here at Riverwoods. Um, we have the opportunity now to take a few questions. I think Diane is getting her screen and camera um, back going again. But again, thank you all for taking the time to present with us today. And thank you to all of our attendees who have taken time out of your day to listen to life at Riverwoods and why these three um, people were just um, willing to make that leap and to take the leap and join at CCRC and make that plan for retirement. We have questions um, coming in fast and furious. Um, Good. With Good. This one. Uh, real quick, what is the studio that Ellen is talking about? Ellen, can you clarify that? You know, the founders, as Diane had said, uh, was an artist. And he was determined, this is the story I heard, maybe from you, Diane, but he was determined that there would be an art spirit here at the woods in, in Riverwoods and that there would be a studio. And so when the, when the plans came along for a studio, he said, no, there'll be two studios. So there'll be lots of opportunity for art in this building. And there's also a ceramic studio, which is up at the ridge. Um, there's woodworking, enormous woodworking. I don't know if you call it a studio or no, you can. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So this is one of those two studios, and people have boxes with their name on it, and they can just go in and pull out the box and pull out their supplies and work at night or after breakfast or whenever you want. And there's an art studio also at the Boulders, which is one of the campuses, the, the newest, um, and that's. Before COVID, there were a lot of classes run there as, as well as just people coming in and, and doing their own artwork. Yeah, we have a watercolor class that goes on, actually scheduled to have two watercolor classes. We have collage class. We're doing some uh, acrylic pours. There's a woman here who's teaching that. So lots of fun classes when COVID is gone. You know. We have a couple questions here about uh, the dining program. Is it a one meal a day? Do you get to choose what meal that is as well as how are meals being handled during the pandemic? Diane, why don't you start with that one? 
Yeah, so yes, typically um, it's one meal a day, either lunch or dinner. So, and we have a dining, each one of our campuses has a main dining room and a cafe. So you can choose whether you live at the woods or the ridge or the boulders, you can look at the menu. <laughs> Um, we post them on our Riverwoods television station, and you can choose to eat at any one of the campuses. You're part of the Riverwoods family, and as a result, you can go to any one of the campuses to enjoy a meal. So, and you don't have to make a reservation. Most of our dining rooms are, they've been liking to ski chalets. They're open, they're informal, and then our cafes are a little more casual. Um, you can order something a little more expressly you can get it to go. So um, that's what we're missing a lot here. I think our residents would say that too, that ability to, com that community feeling in the dining room. So now during COVID, what we're doing is we, our residents get um, a list of the menus, I think at the end of each week with what's gonna be um, uh, served next week, the menu, and then they check off what they want each day. And then those, their meals are delivered to the neighborhoods that they live in. We have large tables um, within close proximity of their apartments that we deliver the meals to. So right now, that's how it's done. I know our dining committee, along with our CEO, Deb Rydell, are working on trying to work on something to get, get a little bit of dining back and forth. So hopefully that'll happen. But I hope that answers your question. Uh, we, can also, we can also go to the uh, cafe. Yep, that's right. Um, Thank you. And, and uh, still order something down there if none of the other me options look good. And you can always get a hamburger or salmon, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have a special meal each day that's been advertised. So there, there's that option as right. well. But you're right. We, we, what we miss is, uh, you know, the... At, you know, being together with other people and eating yeah. with them. But you're working hard and trying to do something That's about right. that. Thanks, Sam. That's great. Um, here's a question, I'll sort of along the same vein, but relating to fitness. Several of you mentioned fitness programs and the trails. What types of mm -hmm. fitness activities are available and um, how is that affected with, uh, under the current pandemic situation? Be great to have each one of you share because I know you're all very active. Share what your favorites are. Uh, every morning, well, every weekday morning, there are, I, I believe, three, I only go to one, uh, fitness classes uh, led. Uh, they're called Mosaic, and I never know what the, uh, that was an acronym for. Uh, anyway, they, they give me very, a, very t uh, a very good workout. I could go to one and say, boy, I've done my work for the day. Uh, to some of these. Uh, some are more just uh, stretching, but um, good stretching. Um, but uh, you go to two or three of those a week and, and you've gotten some exercise out of it. You know, in some of these classes, Mosaic has in there cognitive and balance. And, but, you know, you might be asked, for example, to be balancing on a little board, walking along a little board, and the teacher might come up to you and say, name five green vegetables quickly. So you're balancing on the board and you're naming vegetables. <laughs> You know, so they're paying attention to cognitive, your cognitive health, your balance and strength and stretching. You know, it's, it's comprehensive like that. Tell about your hiking group. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, no, more about, uh, oh, well, Ellen said, tell them about your hiking group. Well, we've organized an informal hiking group. Um, and so we're running hikes in the general area in southern New Hampshire uh, almost every week during the fall. And that's a good way to get out. That's good. I go on them. Thank you for doing that, Herb, actually. You're welcome. But yeah. there's more, there's, um, um, there's a lot of, there, there are some of the, the uh, exercise classes. I go at least twice a week, and that's all we can sign up for ahead of time right now because there are only six of us in a class. Um, so, because, so there's good social distance between each of us. Um, but today, uh, you were in that class, weren't you, this morning, Herb? Was it I was, yeah. Morning? I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and <laughs> we, had a, we had a little bit of, um, I don't know, there was all kinds. Of, I was going to say a little bit of Zoom, which, of course, we didn't have in that exercise, exercise class. But um, business class, but we had uh, uh, bouncing around to 
tunes first, and then we're stretching, and then we're on the floor with little Pilates, and uh, yeah, it was quite a mixture, but uh, not not much breathing time. It was just <laughs> very intense and good for us. Yeah. And um, I just got out of the pool this morning where I swam laps for about 50 minutes. Oh, yeah. 25 yards. Pool. That's right, and those pools, the pools we have here are gorgeous. They yeah. really are gorgeous pools. Is it 25 yards? Yeah. Or meters. Yeah, just short of that. Yeah, um, yeah the lap, the lap to, lane. Yeah, and either one of you want to talk about our bike share program? I know I've seen some some of you use the bikes. I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice wide tires. I feel very safe on them. <laughs> yeah, three bikes. <laughs> right around. Three bikes yeah. at each campus, so you can, if you wanted to enjoy a lunch over at one of the campuses after COVID, you can just get on a bike and ride there and ride back. David and Susan, right. I know you're very active people too. What are some of your favorite fitness programs? Well, no one's mentioned the gyms yet. And yeah. campuses has a gym. Now, during the, the first lockdown period, we, we said, all right, we have to keep working out. So we borrowed some dumbbells um, and all of the fitness folks did videos, which were broadcast on Riverwoods TV. And so we were able to watch a video and work out. Some of them used mm -hmm. weights, some of them didn't. As all of you know, Sam and Herb and Ellen mentioned, there's, there's a variety of classes. So we were able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that was our first experience with classes. So once the classes in person resumed, we said, hmm, this, this was kind of, kind of good for us. So, so let's do those. Now, <laughs> we've, we've, we're lifelong, just about lifelong gym people. Um, so we've taken full advantage of the gym here at the boulders. We go generally twice a week and do just a, 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 resist, a heavy resistance training workout. So between that and the classes and, and walking and what have you, we, you, you can't lack for exercise. I, I remember someone who moved in about a year before us mentioning she'd never gotten so much exercise in her life until she moved here because it was all available. You didn't have to drive five or 10 or whatever miles to go to or, or to meet a, a hiking group or what have you. It was all right here. Mm, that's right. right. I, I might add that uh, the gym at the woods anyway is very well equipped and the equipment is really first rate. Mm -hmm. yeah, the gym here at the boulders is a very good selection of free weights, machines. We've got a couple of treadmills, a couple of recumbent bikes. Um, so you don't get bored if or you uh, don't just get into a, a routine on that's my machine. I never use anything else. Oh, there's a big pickleball group. I don't play that, oh, but they're yeah. very active. There's a kayaking group. There's a bicycling mm. group that Steve has been running, you know. Mm. And a bocce. Oh, oh, and bocce. We play bocce every Wednesday morning. Right. And we're going to be buying socks for the bocce team, like striped socks. <laughs> we have to find out exactly who, who, who's on the team. And there's a bunch of people that show up on Wednesday, and it's lots of fun. That's great. I've got a couple questions here for you, Diane. Um, uh, we have a question about inclusivity and are we a welcoming community? And then following that, could you uh, clarify a little bit on waiting periods and deposit expectations, that sort of thing? Sure. So um, Riverwoods does have an inclusivity committee. So, um, and so we are inclusive, you know, we welcome, um, you know, anyone that comes to visit is very much welcomed in our committee works on a regular basis on making sure that we get that word out to someone that might be intimidated to come. So uh, we do have a couple of same-sex couples on our wait list. Um, so we have a couple of Asian people on our wait list. As many of you know that are from New Hampshire, um, New Hampshire is not a very diverse state. Um, I always say our diversity is from Phillips Exeter Academy. Um, but anyway, we're, we're fortunate that we are opening those doors and welcome anyone, um, no matter what. So um, in terms of our wait list, you know, the times now go anywhere from one to three years, a little bit shorter than they were, as some of the people that are on our wait list have decided to wait to move in until they, there's a vaccine. So that has uh, opened up some possibilities. So if you are interested in coming sooner than later, then I suggest that you um, get in touch with us. 
Um, the deposit is substantial. We request a 10% deposit of the entrance fee. So, you know, without getting into all those details, um, but it is a 10% deposit which is, of the entrance fee. So it's, it's, it is substantial. And we do that because the people that are on our wait list are, have done their due diligence and we feel a bit are committed to Riverwoods. And that deposit gets 4% interest which is applied to your entrance fee when you move in. So it is an investment, but for many people, it's like an aha moment. I've made my plan, I have my future plan. I can now sit back knowing that at some point I'm going to be um, going to Riverwoods. Right. So I hope I that helps. I'm sure. About the inclusivity uh, committee, uh, I'm not on that, but I know a little about it. And they also have a segment now that's dealing with uh, social justice. Oh, good, great. Um, and, uh, it's trying to figure out how 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 that's appropriate to be talked about here and promoted. Um, uh, but whatever, it, it is a concern. That's, that's great. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we have a question about electric cars. Do we have any residents using electric cars? Oh, Sam, you know, Sam asked me that. They said, he said, what if someone asked about electric cars? And, you know, there was talk about that prior to COVID because we do have people that are buying electric cars. However, right now, all of our priorities and energies are put towards COVID and protecting our residents and keeping everyone safe. So I would say I don't have an answer for you now. I would say that at some point, um, we will have um, uh, an opportunity or facility or plugs or some way that um, that would work for you. So stay tuned. There's lots that's going to be happening, I'm sure, once we um, get through COVID. So I guess that's the end of our questions, the end of our presentation. I want to give a big round of applause to our amazing residents and presenters. Thank you so much for your insights. I always sort of get the goosebumps when I hear, rehear the reasons that you came here and how happy you are here. That just makes my day. So, um, and I want to thank all of the participants who are educating themselves about this process. I always say that this is a big decision and all of our panelists will agree who have done their due diligence. So I suggest that you, and I encourage you to Continue to educate yourselves um, with us, with other communities. We are hosting uh, another event on October 13th. It's not necessarily about Riverwoods, but it'll connect you with our community and some of the workshops that we offer. In addition, on uh, November, October 22nd, we are hosting a Lunch and Learn, which is an opportunity for you. We can see you, and it's an interactive uh, uh, vi uh, virtual tour of our community. So that's going to be coming up. We'll do one more probably in November. So we're also pleased to tell you that we are hosting tours now. So we are welcome. You're welcome to give us a call um, anytime, ask questions. But if you'd like to come and visit, um, we welcome that. We will give you a tour of the common areas What's most important to us is that we get to know you, we cultivate the relationship with you and the community um, so that over a period of time, you know whether this is right or wrong for you. So even though we're doing things virtually now, we really wanna do it in person. Uh, we want you to know us, we wanna know you, we wanna um, you know, give you, educate you as much as possible in this process. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to say good, goodbye, stay well, stay in touch, and thank you for your participation today.